Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Bricks here. How are you holding up, Ice? That was the weirdest intro I think I've ever heard before, but besides that, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We're going to be taking on our first Elder Dragon here officially. Oh, yes. And what's so interesting about this elder is that they don't look like an elder dragon. But by the time you're done with them, you'll understand what an elder dragon actually is. I don't show off all their real strengths because there's things like not being able to use traps against them. But yeah, Fiona's just enjoying the view here. So there are some interesting nuances to Elder Dragons. As Brick said, you can't use traps on them. They avoid traps. You cannot put them to sleep. You cannot capture them. They are not capturable. You must defeat them. Which means if they, for some reason, had fallen asleep, rather than try to put a trap underneath them, you want to use barrel bombs and other explosive devices to put as much damage as you can on them. Ooh, new weapon day. Indeed. And one thing I really like about dual blades is how unique each of them appear. I had to slow down through each of the different sets there just to show off, like, there's a chainsaw one, there's, like, mini axes. Someone requested this one get shown off, so time to upgrade to the Odo blades. The Odo blades are gorgeous. Really cool design. A lot of the Odogoron weapons have a very, almost, um, Japanese flair to them. Uh, they they try to very much kind of keep this idea of these these samurai weapons and uh, the Odo gear goes great with them but these ones are actually extra special and unique just because of the way they look yeah we've seen little daggers the little chainsaw swords the little axe blades but this one when it gets fully upgraded well we're about to see What a massive change all of a sudden. Yep, the Blood Drinker Chain Blade. Great affinity, decent damage for daggers, which are normally pretty low, and 120 fire element on it. You will notice that, like Sword and Shield, you have a very, very low attack power, but you also notice that the fire damage on it has got a little extra boost. The nice thing about these weapons, and any dual blades in general, as just as much as sword and shield is they're great elemental elemental and status they're excellent because they get high amounts of both they may not look that high but oh yes there's a festival going on of course if you ever see the handler in a weird set of attire that's because there's a festival going on but dual blades are based on the number of hits one thing we should point out here too is that this is a low rank fight I'm using some of my high rank gear, so I'll be having a bit of an easier time. But I'm going to customize a few things here. You saw me put on the Thunder Resistance charm. The armor I'm wearing had, I believe, negative 7 Thunder Resistance. And Thunder is this Elder Dragon's specialty. So I'm going to load up on Elemental Resistance food here. Most Elder Dragons very specifically embody a theme, whether that be some sort of status ailment or actual element. What do you think? Should I give them the full primer on the Elders? Go ahead. So, Elder Dragons, besides not being able to be captured, have some other very unique properties about them. They can go into a special mode during the fight, and during this mode, they get certain immunities. So, parts of their body that you could otherwise hit and do full damage to, you no longer can. Essentially, this is sort of their, their Elder Seal moment. And Elder Seal weapons allow you to block those abilities, and you'll find a lot of those. They'll have Dragon Element on them, which sometimes do extra damage to elders, but not too often. And more often than that, the Elder Seal will lock it so they leave those abilities quickly behind and you're able to do full damage to them. Kieran's awful because the only part you can hurt when they go into that mode is literally their horn. And Kieran is not a big target. Plus, when Kieran... You'll notice here, like, Kieran has a few select attacks. They got... 
a random thunder blast in front of them, they'll hit themselves in a radius, they'll have a straight on charge blast, a few other different ones here, but all of those get incredibly charged up when Kieran goes into the Elder Seal mode. Basically, when regular monsters become enraged, you want to be careful. Yes, and Elder Seal, uh, sorry, and Elder Dragons are ten times worse for that. There's that little dodge in demon mode for the dual blades. I find dual blades are a bit of a momentum weapon. If you're doing good and able to get lots of hits in, you're going to keep doing well. It's when you're on the defensive, have to dodge a lot, can't get your hits in, you're really going to be suffering even more at those points. Kind of think of it like when you were playing the Greatsword. If you remember Brick's Greatsword playing, there was a lot of this slow, methodical play. If you treat the dual blades somewhat like that, except the combos take the place of those big charge slashes, you'll do pretty well. Because you do need that time in order to deliver uh, adequate amounts of damage. You can see it does nothing. You're doing like 11, 12, 16, but it adds up. I am getting a lot of those little hits in though. Usually. Usually. <laughs> hey, if you miss one big true charge slash, but still manage to tick them with a whole bunch of little tiny dual blade hits, you're still at least doing damage. I do not like Kirin. One of my favorites. But they can be very annoying because they have a lot of random lightning strikes. And when he gets powered up, you get even less time to react, I find. Hit in the head a lot, though, which is a good strategy, but... Uh, unfortunately, Kirin is a small target. Probably easier to fight with a lot of the small weapons, though. Indeed. One of the things I don't like about the dual blades is that they have a very small move set that get expanded as you go into their different forms. You have your demon mode you go into by hitting R2, and you'll basically super power up most of your attacks. And you power up demon mode by doing just normal attacks. It's pretty easy. Just do normal attacks, you power up demon mode, go into demon mode, and it starts draining your stamina. There's my big triangle circle attack I was about to talk about, and it just unloads, but leaves you very open. Kieran's fairly agile, so you really want to be able to time your attacks and use of that very well. Oh no, good dodge out. Now we'll see all the upgraded attacks here. Yeah, you can see Kieran there is flashing, you see the red zone around the outside of your mini-map. Lots of things are telling you. Also, he's got his giant mohawk. Yep. But that charged up blast he does now becomes a triple lightning strike that can be very hard to dodge. While he's running around, his random strikes now get about three times as many random strikes going on. He can just do that strike almost instantaneously. Really stinks if you gotta sharpen your weapon or drink a potion. Or if you're very low on your lightning resist. Kieran also has the Lightning Blight skill, which will make it so you can get stunned a lot if you have poor resist and are taking tons of damage, leaving you even more vulnerable to take more damage. You do not want that to happen to you. You can kill clear that with the Nullberries. It's very recommended you do it. Now, a little bit more about the Dual Blades. We, we talked about the gauge that you build up. So you're going to build up to your demon gauge. You're going to start flowing that demon gauge down, and that's going to be eating up a lot of your stamina. Now, it eats up stamina even if you're not attacking, so you want to get as many attacks in as you can. Then you get to go to archdemon mode when you return back to the normal attacks, and you'll actually keep some of your demon gauge abilities while in your basic moveset. 
Uh, you get sort of an enhanced dodge. You get a few more attacks. You can do some nice combos, but it's not as powerful as the Demon Gauge being out. So you want to keep that at, as much as you possibly can built up. It's very cyclic, like Brick said. You're kind of going through stages. It's also very beneficial if you can get some of the, like stamina boosting skills or recharging one so you can stay in those modes longer. You won't be able to stay in it permanently, there's no way to increase your boost that much, but... Evade Extender is nice, but you have to watch out anything that boosts the distance of your evades. Ooh, ran right into the air! Yep. You can see me bouncing off a little of Kieran's uh, from my attacks there. The armor... Gives him a huge boost. I think some of the attacks I get when I hit triangle and circle have mind's eye, but not all of them. Mm. I will say I'm not as well versed in this weapon. I just, I don't like committing myself to long combos. I find that if I go for a great sword slash and I'm going to miss it, that shoulder tackle is great. Whereas with dual blades, if you're in a combo, you are in a combo. There is no getting out of it. Well, unless somebody hits you really hard. One of the things you might notice me doing here is the circle attacks do a lot of lunging. I tend to use that as a dodge in some ways if I see an attack coming, just because it's very quick, easy to slide into some of the combos. It doesn't reposition you a lot, but sometimes just enough. And Kieran's actually pretty fragile. Like, you can break the horn pretty easily. Uh, Kieran staggers a lot, can be knocked over fairly easily as well. The difficulty is the speed, randomness, overall evasion, and the size. Kieran's just an unusual target, because, I mean, he's actually smaller than Puke Puke, and I actually think sometimes Kieran's even smaller than, like, Kuliaku. The small versions can be quite dinky. I want to say I get a large crown for this, if not a just a mention that it's the largest one I fought. Which isn't much when I haven't fought a lot of them, but... Mm. There's also a great attack I'm not able to show off against Kieran, uh, just because he likes knocking me out of the air so much. But you also have the ability to do a rolling cut along the length of a creature if you're in the air. Yeah, you have to be in demon mode, I believe, to use that. And then you do your, your wall jump off some sort of, like, the mushrooms in this area. It's quite devastating against the large monsters. Kieran's, like we were just saying, one of the smaller ones, so not good use here, but... Odegoron's a really fun one to do it against if you're practicing it, because Odegoron's very long from t head to tail. And uh, also, Legiana in this stage, in this exact area, it's really easy to kind of practice, because Legida likes to do these weird floating things, which just kind of stays in one spot before doing attacks. This area, area also has a lot of the wedge beetles you can grab onto and do aerial attacks with. Some of the swings you can do with that are quite impressive, I find. If nothing else, they speed up travel in this place so much. Now, I'm not sure if it's still the case, but I remember dual blades were very high up in the favorite weapons of players. I believe uh, in Japanese, players voted the number one weapon in the game. Uh, at least that was about a year or two ago. Followed by longsword, followed by, I think, greatsword. So, also, dual blades are one of the very old Monster Hunter weapons. They've been around for a long time. And essentially, the big four that have been around for quite a long time and are kind of iconic are the longsword, the greatsword, the dual blades, and the sword and shield. One thing with those weapons, too, if you notice, a lot of them have unique designs. I want to say some of them are legacy ones from back in the old games. Absolutely, I'm sure they are. Now, this is one problem with Kieran, is he'll go to some interesting areas, and you do not want to be fighting Kieran in a tight space. Also, you don't want to be climbing anything while fighting Kieran, because Kieran hates people climbing vines, and so many times you will get lightning while on those vines. Because Kieran doesn't actually have to be near you to hit you, and that sticks. Oh, well, that was a thing of beauty right there. Even getting kicked afterwards. So one thing I really like about Kieran is it's kind of a majestic horse. Like, he's throwing lightning bolts, but he's still going to charge into you, still going to kick you in the face if you get behind him. And I just love the appearance of him. Like, very unique compared to every other creature in the game, I find. That's true. The Kieran gear is actually really gorgeous looking, too. 
very much. I wish the weapons were a little bit more unique, but uh, the armor is definitely something. The lance is gorgeous. If you ever get the chance, check out the Kirin lance. It is absolutely a thing of beauty. It's not very good, but it is beautiful. Now, you were talking about Elder Seal weapons before, and almost every Elder Dragon tends to drop Dragon Pods. These have the Elder Seal effect on them, which will help calm down these creatures a little bit. The very important part is you need to hit them in the spot that is normally their weak point when they're in that mode. If you want to get the maximum effect out of them. If you do, though, it exhausts them, it does an okay amount of damage, and most of all, it stops them from staying in that mode. Fortunately, you didn't get to keep him in this because he's limping away. Watch his leap. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? I will warn people of this because it uh, has haunted my nightmares. I believe one of the main quests you need to advance in Hunter Rank. Later on in the game, you'll have to get your Hunter Rank to a certain point before you can do missions. Much like this, but it's not directed by story, but by side quests. You will have to fight two Kirins, two high rank Kirins at the same time. It's, uh, it's hard. <laughs> it's yeah. really hard. As much as I love Kirin, it is one of most people's most hated creatures. I'm just not good at dodging the lightning. And I think that's the problem. It's too majestic. Yep. Now, you can go an alternate way because Kirin is actually taking a high path. If they're going all the way up to the top, if they're hurt, they're very likely going to go up to the Legiana spot. So you can actually put on your glider mantle and go from the second camp all the way up to the top. Although I really wanted the defense mantle for this one. If I had higher lightning defense, maybe I wouldn't have done that switch. There's a lot of areas here where you get wind bursts going upwards you can use, especially in this next one coming up. Mm-hmm. So really good for aerial weapons. Love that double whip over. Very stylish. Very stylish Batman. Now watch me do the bat 2 c on Kieran's sleeping butt. <laughs> Now, this is when you will see Elder Dragons sleep. After you've beaten the crap out of them, they'll go back to their nest and try to recuperate. They will heal, so make sure you come after them. Yeah, and also, if you have a weapon that does a single big hit, use it. Obviously, Brixter's using the dual blades. Not a, not a great weapon for hitting an enemy who's sleeping. The first bit of damage anything takes while sleeping does double, meaning the barrels do double. And anything that hits the barrels in that first strike will do double. Greatsword is kind of the undisputed king of that. If you can hit that true charge slash just the very last flip hit, you can almost, in some cases, kill an Elder Dragon while they sleep with that one attack. And Kieran is not happy here for being woken up. Yeah, they will almost always wake up in this mode. And we were talking about how you can't use traps on them. And because of that, there is no way to capture almost every single Elder Dragon. There are some Elder-esque monsters you can trap, but even they have some special animations when caught in a trap. We'll be taking on one of them next time, and... Well, let's not spoil that. Oh boy, okay. But there's just the rapid attacks that Kieran can unload in this mode. Like, he has a blast radius one where he won't hit himself with his charge up attack. He'll just rapid fire around him. And in this mode, it is devastating. He'll do, yeah. I think it's about 15 lightning strikes around him. They do KO damage as well. And as we talked about, the Thunder Blight actually can cause even more problems with that because you'll get knocked out all the time. I greatly regret not putting Null Berries on my Quick Bar for this fight. I really should have. But that's something we'll be seeing later on as we take on even this Elder Dragon again in higher difficulties, is that you're going to have to customize not only your equipment, but how you have your Quick Bar set up. Mm -hmm. A lot of those really good buff items. I'm sure Brix is going to show you those, but there's some demon drugs and defensive elixirs you're going to be using. They are not necessary, 
but they help a lot. They really kind of cut the difference between a victory and a loss. Oh, oh. Oh, that's, that is awesome to watch, I just have to say. I just that absolute crazy combo. In some ways, I wish Kieran was bigger so you could see me do one of those, like, just swinging my weapon for five minutes against him. But... <laughs> Good fight. That That's that's about as typical as a Kieran fight goes. Uh, he got hit by the lightning. You're going to get hit by the lightning. He didn't have a huge amount of defense. Now, he could have gone into this with a huge amount of lightning defense and all the best mantles and a weapon that's a little more versed for fighting Kieran. Kieran's actually very easy to fight with a ranged weapon, specifically the light bow gun just tears Kieran apart because you don't have to worry about where you are. Bow also works really well. Quick dodges. Heavy bow gun's nice, but eventually that shield just, uh, just doesn't hold up. But yeah, no, this was a very typical fight. So those of you out there who are scared about challenging Kieran, there's a lot of notes you can take from this. One more small thing about elders is that elders usually have four carves as opposed to the single three that you get from most monsters. So don't stop carving after you get three items. Hold down the button until it is completely depleted. Did you just kill one of those little floaties? I didn't kill him. I knocked him down. You can actually see his tail wiggling behind me in a second. See? <laughs> so rude. <laughs> that ending scene. Just an explosion. It's appropriate for Kieran. Uh, just, you know, lightning blasts and explosions everywhere for me. Now, the Kieran Thunderhorn is something you get for breaking the horn. In most cases, why it's a bonus reward. And the commendations are specifically for a lot of Elder Dragons and other difficult missions. And they are used for uh, specific gear, if I remember correctly. A lot of the really good gear and a particular set of weapons and such you can get from workshop uh, quests and whatnot. Right. More steam. Well, we also did something special with other quests I had been taking care of here. I'm going to take care of this delivery finally and now our harvest box is upgraded and that is good it's something that's going on off camera but you <laughs> definitely want to keep back and keep keep growing stuff from your tree the tall guy was in the way of the exclamation mark I thought it was the wrong person there patient biologist hiding underneath the table but more special tools for us. And the lightning mantle is really, really good for rematches. Oh, yeah. Almost essential. Almost all of the Elder Dragons who have an element, you're going to want to bring in the Elemental Mantle to fight them. Unfortunately, very often, to get that Elemental Mantle, you have to fight them once without it. However, their weapons and gear are really good. There's some later on that are incredibly good and just look amazing. So it's highly recommended you fight them multiple times anyways. Having 30 slots here is pretty handy. Is it showcase time? Well, we got one more thing to do here. You see that exclamation mark, so I'm just going to grab that. Then to show off all our fancy, fancy armor. But as traditional, everyone here is just really lazy. Mm-hmm. But I'm sick. I mean, my hands are pretty tied right now. I mean, just do it for me. Think about it. Literally everybody here is just like, could you do this mission for me? And then when they hop on the cutscenes, they're like, ah, just send them. They know what they're doing. Could you picture something like that? Like, hey, you're the uh, top employee here. Can you just like do my work for the day? I'm going home. Oh, I'm sorry. If my work involves me dying, someone's sharing the responsibility. <laughs> Oh, the male set, I don't like as much as the female. It's just the helm, but... <laughs> There's a particular image that it invokes. Unicorn man. But here we go. I really like the set, though. Like, it's... I don't want to say native appearing, but it's definitely, like, got a very unique appearance to it. Yeah, the first are pretty cool, and you'll see a lot of Monster Hunter cosplays use the Kirin set because it is a very cool-looking set. Uh, it is surprisingly very kind of ice-based uh, with the fur and stuff on it, and uh, its set bonuses are interesting, but it's not particularly good, in my opinion. It's useful. It's yeah. useful. 
Uh, there's a lot of skills on it, though, that are very handy as well. I'm actually going to go to the limb and say I love the look of this set. I love the coat. I love the open coat with kind of the split ends. And I actually really love the uh, the giant mustachioed mask. Mario would be proud. Absolutely. There's not much difference between the alpha and beta. Just some minor vest differences there. But it's an odd set. I don't really know what to say about the skills here. Like, you get a odd mishmash. Stun resistance is nice. Constitution, some water attack. Water attack is pretty rare popping up on gear, so if you're trying to build a specific set for a water weapon, it's not too bad. As always, the belts and gloves are always the best pieces of most of these sets. It's also one of the few sets that has the wide range ability if you want to become a support character. Mm -hmm. We may at some point want to show everybody kind of like the little sort of awkward strange builds, like the, the support uh, sword and shield build and whatnot. Maybe somewhere down the line, because those builds are really fun, not for solo play. They are not for solo play. They are meant for playing with other people. And a lot of the, there's master rank hunts. We won't get into what those are, but they're very difficult hunts you get to in the expansion. Probably be important for a lot of those. One of your favorite sets. Oh, my absolute favorite set. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Plague Doctor style, and there's more than that to this. Love the belts, the straps. Really feels like it was made by the guy who made Kingdom Hearts. So many belts. And that's my favorite version of it, too. I love the red on the goggles and the hat. There's just a lot going on. And it's a good set, too, for skills. This is a great one when you want to go diving back into the uh, veil for more monster goodness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's actually a very specific skill that you only can get through this or I think some very rare accessories. And that's the effluvial expert skill. And that gives you a lot of extra defenses against what happens in the veil, and it is rare. So you're going to want to at least build the coil, the belt, even if you're not going to build any of the other parts of the set. We're definitely not done down there, so it'll be useful to have something like that. There's a few other environmental hazards like that we'll run into, and anytime you're in a place that will constantly tick damage to you, you might want to be immune to that. Mm-hmm. I will also say another thing about the set, which is rather rare, is that it does actually have decent thunder defense. Not great, but decent. And it, the thing it's terrible with is water, which comes up very rarely. The Barrow set. Yeah, full tanking. One of my favorite sets. If you can see, I actually have a lot of the alpha pieces on my main character. It looks dumb on the male, I find. It's got those 40k pauldrons going. <laughs> but uh, the female set's a little bit more realistic. If your model doesn't take up more than its space it needs to, it's not done right. That's armor. Ours was ready to become like a chess piece. That's true. The, the weird kind of claw thing in front of the chest is it looks loose. It looks like you probably wouldn't want to fall down on your front wearing that. Yeah. But uh, the helmet's actually pretty cool. I actually like the style of the helmet with kind of the two unilateral pieces and all the horns. It looks pretty cool. Monster Hunter's design team is, they're some of the most brilliant designers because they use a lot of classic real-world armor, armor designs mixed with things you would never, ever think of. And they have to take notes from the monsters. So just kudos to them and years and years of service. Which, by the way... I want to mention something. Uh, two new Monster Hunter games just got announced uh, the other day. Monster Hunter Rise, which is coming out for the Switch, and Monster Hunter Stories 2, which is a role-playing game. So if you like the story of Monster Hunter, a lot of the monsters and backstory, but you find the game just a bit too difficult, you're not an action RPG fan, uh, the Stories game is actually quite good. I played the first one. It is very, very fun. The Jura set is weird. It looks, honestly, like something from a Sentai show, like Power Rangers. Yeah. It's got I can that, like, that. the full helmet and the covering up, and it just... It's all the curved armor pieces. You don't see that too often. Yeah, yeah, Common Rider specifically. There's a little, little bugginess to it. The male and female are fairly similar, though. I do like the back sweep on this helmet. You also get to see her face. Male face is just like, nope, shove that away. No one wants to see that. A lot of the water sets, too, love slapping on the aquatic polar mobility skill. 
But stuff like Focus, it's got a couple other okay ones to use. It's a piecemeal set. A lot of the sets early on are very piecemeal. You're going to go, oh, I like this ability, but I don't know about the rest of it. It's when you start getting into the armor skill sets, where you want to have three, four, or five pieces even sometimes, that you really want to look closely at that set. Lots of cool sets. Absolutely lots of cool sets. And you're going to have your favorites. Of the Palico sets, there's one specifically I'm super excited to see. The Kieran set is just adorable. Look at that weapon, too. Yeah. The little uh, pod drums on there. And he's got a huge bell on his neck. I will actually say the way that that lance looks is very similar to the style of the lance that you actually get uh, for bringing in Kieran parts. So... And I made that lance because it just looked gorgeous. I didn't know any better. I had no idea. Um, now, I will say, actually, the lance, if you're a new player and you're not trying to, you know, get the perfect setup, lance is pretty good. Thunder damage is very strong against a lot of very difficult monsters you fight, and it's one of the more common weaknesses and also one of the least common resistances. Thunder is always handy to bring on along for a random fight. If you don't know what the weakness of a monster is, thunder tends to be a safe bet. But next time, we'll be taking on another big, tough creature. So I hope you join me for that, and take care, all.